I've spent over $2,500 to recover photos from an SD card. I'm gonna show you how to avoid it happening to you too. Hey guys, it's Ray Alvarez. And in this video, I wanna show you guys my workflow when it comes to storage management during photo shoots, backups, and how you can avoid a catastrophe such as losing all of the photos from an important day, such as a wedding. All right, quick story time. There was one time many years ago, my best friend and partner Casey and I were shooting a wedding. We got back home and it was time to dump all of the photos into storage. We had to charge batteries for the very next wedding, which was the very next day. I pulled out the one SD card that was inside of my camera. And when it came out, I heard what sounded like a cracking sound. I didn't think anything of it. So I insert the card into the SD card reader and begin importing only for it not to work. Panic mode begins right now. I tried everything guys. So I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here for you. I'm not sure what happened to the card, but it just stopped working. And a part of me feels that some way, somehow the card got damaged. So I send the card into a data recovery center. I'm talking about the white clean room, the one where the guys wear the white suits. Yeah, that $2,500 and a month later, I received the same broken card, a hard drive with what they were successfully able to recover and instructions on how to access the files, which brings me to what this whole video is about. Ever since that day, I've come up with a process. This process is applied to any photo session that's gonna last more than two hours, especially weddings. All of the camera bodies I use for work have dual storage slots, which means I can always use two SD cards at a time. I have a few Sony A7R5s, which allow me to use a combination of SD cards or CF Express cards type A. Up until a year ago, I used smaller size cards like 80 gigabytes, 60 gigabytes, but now I'm using 128 gigabyte cards or more. And I always use two at a time. On my camera, slot one will be the main card and slot two will be the redundancy card, AKA a backup. If something happens to the first card, the second card will be an exact duplicate of the first and serves as a primary backup. So you're probably thinking, okay, what happens if your camera body only has one slot? That's a good point. And I wanted to bring it up because although all of the camera bodies that I've ever owned always had two slots, but there was a time that I had a camera that had one SD card slot. And for that, I have a completely separate process, which I would highly recommend to anyone who has a camera with one SD card slot. I would recommend working with an 80 gigabyte card, for example. Have two or four of them with you at all times. If you tend to have your camera on burst mode or you do take a lot of pictures or you're really quick with it, then have at least two to four cards with you. That way, if you are stuck in a situation where you can't run to your camera bag, then you already have your cards with you and you can try your best to swap it out when you have a quick moment. When I had the camera with only one slot, during a wedding, I used to break it down into three parts. The first half of the day would all go in one card. So prep, first looks, portraits, details, and ceremony. I would then remove that card, safely store it in a card case, and put another freshly formatted card into the camera. This card would then store photos such as more portraits, cocktail hour, details, and everything in between the ceremony and the start of the reception. Once the reception is about to start, I swap it out one more time. I store that second card into a case and swap it for another freshly formatted card. Now I know, you may be wondering and shaking your head like, really Ray, really? But here's the thing, it's my method of redundancy. It ensures that I'm safely storing chunks of the wedding day on different cards. What happens if you only use one slot and you use a 160 gigabyte card and shoot most of the day on that card only to have it get damaged or corrupted? That's gonna be a bad day for you. But with my method, the day is split into three cards. So if something happens to one of those cards, then you have less of a risk of losing lots and lots of photos. If it were me, I would rather potentially lose 200 photos and try to retrieve them than to lose over 800 photos or more. I know. It's a bit repetitive and it includes a few extra steps during your day, but it's a preferred method for me. One that gives me a better sense of security and assurance. I wanted to share that quick tip with you guys. 
I would hate to see anybody have to spend thousands just to retrieve photos. Or even worse, telling your clients that you lost their photos. Look, being a photographer, you have to implement risk management into your business. And I hope this video helps you do just that. I'm all about the experience. And with that, have you seen any of my videos where I proof photos with the client throughout the photo shoot? It's a great way to elevate that experience and provide a great client and business trusted relationship. If you want to learn how to do that, watch any of these two videos coming up on your screen. I made one for my Nikon shooters and I made one for my Sony shooters. For my Canon people, look, just wait a little bit longer. I got you soon. But as always, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.